Gaming can be done on consoles, desktops and laptops. Speaking of laptops, they have become essential tools in our daily lives, facilitating everything from work and communication to education and even entertainment. Let's discuss some tips for keeping your machine in optimal working order. Like any PC, laptops require effective cooling, which is accomplished through heat pipes that conduct heat away from the processors and graphics card to the heat sink, which are aided by a fan or multiple fans that blow air through it to dissipate heat. However, dust can come and accumulate in the heat sink and fan, reducing airflow and increasing temperatures. Additionally, the thermal paste can degrade over time, becoming less effective and leading to higher temperatures as well. I recommend cleaning up the dust at least once a year, depending on your environment and how you use your laptop, while reapplying thermal paste should be done every couple of years. But how do you go about it? Glad you asked. I'll show you pictures of my laptops and my fiancé's, as I recently cleaned both and changed the thermal paste. First, turn off the laptop and flip it over. Locate and remove all screws, remembering where each one goes, as some screws at the front may be shorter as the one in the back. Sometimes screws can be hidden under rubber pads or stickers, so check the manual or any disassembly guide online for your specific model. Once all the screws are removed, carefully pry it open at an edge using your nails, a guitar pick or a similar soft tool to avoid damage. The bottom and top parts are usually held together by clips in plastic models, while metal ones may not have them. Before fully opening the laptop, again check for any ribbon cables and disconnect them, about which you will learn in the manual or video guide. Really, it's important to study beforehand as you do things. Inside, now you see the motherboard. If you feel safer, you can disconnect the battery. Just remember to reconnect it later. My laptop isn't a gaming model, but it does have a dedicated GPU. You will find one heat pipe and a fan that might have some dust, though the heat sink isn't visible as it is hidden under the heat pipe. Remove the screws holding the heat sink, clean off the old thermal paste using isopropanol alcohol and tissue, or you can also use alcohol wipes. Note that some laptops use liquid metal. If that's the case, it's best to leave it be or take it to the professionals as just a small amount of that thing on your motherboard and your laptop is toast because you know it's metal, it's conductive, while thermal paste is non-conductive, so you are safe to use it. So don't put it on places where it's not supposed to be. After clearing the CPU and GPU die, you can use cotton swabs to clean around them. Be cautious, because around there are small resistors that could be damaged. If you're unsure, leave it be, as that thermal paste does not influence the functionality. Before applying new thermal paste, clean the fans and heat sink using compressed air. However, hold the fans in place as you do this, as they should not spin freely. I will not go into details why, they can break, well I'm going into details why, so they can break, uh, they can cause a voltage that can damage your motherboard or similar, so hold them tight. Once everything is cleaned. Apply a small amount of thermal paste to the CPU and GPU die, of course the bigger the die the more thermal paste. In case that you apply too little, you will see later when you will be testing the temperatures, you can just redo the process, remove the thermal paste and apply more. When reattaching the heatsink, be sure to tighten the screws like the numbers indicate near the screw holes. Reconnect the battery or any other cable you unplugged. And now comes the moment of truth. Power it on and you will see whether you killed your laptop 
or not, but yeah, it should work. For example, my laptop has a temperature limit of 70 degrees Celsius, at which point it starts throttling. Before cleaning, while playing dredge, it was running at 69-70 degrees, hitting that hard limit. After cleaning it, the temperatures drop to around 62 degrees, resulting in a delta of 7 or 8 degrees, depending whether you measure it on the GPU or CPU. But why is it good to keep your laptop cooler? Lower temperatures generally mean a longer lifespan, achieved through regular maintenance. Since laptops typically have less powerful components than desktops, maintaining lower temperatures can also provide more headroom for overclocking. Now, are there ways to lower temperatures without opening your laptop? Absolutely! I'll first cover hardware solutions and then move to software. Airflow is crucial. If the laptop is on a solid ground, the temperatures can reach around 63 degrees on the GPU and 65 on the CPU. But hey, earlier you said you had around 62 degrees. Yeah, that's right. But what impacts the temperatures is the temperature of the environment. And this test was done in a hotter environment. If you lift it up slightly, the temperatures can drop by a couple of degrees, as seen here. I used a piece of wood that was 18 mm thick under the rear part of the laptop. The best solution, however, is to use a cooling pad, which reduced my temperatures from 63 and 65 respectively to 59 and 61, so getting a difference of 4 degrees for both GPU and CPU. That's crazy. One thing to avoid at all cost is placing a laptop on a blanket. Not only do temperatures soar, hitting the hard limit of 70 degrees in my example, but the cooling system can clock faster due to fibers being sucked in into the laptop. Definitely prolonged use as that will cause issues. Now let's discuss what you can do. Uh, keeping in mind that these steps should only be taken if you understand what you are doing, so please read around on the internet. But yeah, let's talk about undervolting, so software solutions. The point of undervolting is to lower consumption of power, so prolonging battery life, generating less heat while maintaining the same performance. Chips are designed to work at a specific voltage, but they can also function at a slightly lower or higher voltage. Usually higher voltages are used for overclocking. In both cases you might get into stability issues, while undervolting is generally safe for the components, the stability concern remains. So try reducing the voltages gradually of increments of 0.01 volt or 10 millivolts. For the CPU, you can use Throttle Stop or Ryzen Master if you have an AMD processor to adjust the core and cache voltages. Know that some processors and generations can handle undervolting better than others. For instance, my i5-8250U can be undervolted by more than 120 millivolts on the core, while the cache can only be lowered about 20 millivolts. The same principle applies to GPUs. Research whether you can undervolt your GPU using MSI Afterburner, if not, ASUS GPU tweak should work as well. The results may vary from GPU to GPU, as said also from generation to generation, but generally, undervolting will lower the running temperatures by a few degrees and extend battery life, especially if you're not plugged in. But you know, if you're gaming, it's best to have your laptop plugged in for maximum performance. That's it for this video. I do hope you found this interesting and useful. Let me know if you'd like to see a similar guide for desktop PCs and I will see you all on the battlefields. Gaming Teacher, out.